be a failure. As long as it's not gonna kill you, it's gonna make you what? Stronger. the year, how do we move the entrepreneurial spirit of the community, and who is the right profile to be able to bring to drive this kind of uh, culture we want to see the entrepreneurs in, uh, in 2019. Because we know in the beginning of the year people set up a uh, long list of goals, long list of uh, what you call them, uh, New Year resolution, but at the end of the year you don't follow this through. So, when we're brainstorming in the office and we're thinking, who's the profile to make this, uh, that has an amazing story to bring, uh, bring this kind of culture in the, in the, entrepreneur, uh, uh, in the entrepreneurship mindset of people in the community, are we part of Henry Academy? So, uh, we have a culture of uh, startup grind. When we, let's assume he's not here, I know all of you know Henry, and most of you have been chatting with him. But when I'm going to introduce you, we're all going to stand up and we'll give you like a, a huge standing ovation and welcome him to the stage. Uh, do you agree with me? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. So, now I want to invite the speaker. He's uh, a Pan-African, not just by title, but also by heart. He was born in Kenya. He grew in Burundi. He lives in Rwanda. He started in the US and now his company is based in Rwanda but also expanding across Africa. So I think he deserves a, a huge round of applause for that. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for our speaker for tonight, Henry Yakarundi. chat it's not anything super fancy i'll be asking henry a series of questions and he's going to be giving us answers feel free to contribute feel free to tweet don't hide your phones we want the word to go out there remember you have tpx to win for a text of it so henry welcome to startup grind and <coughs> thank you for bringing us here uh, for coming to, uh, to this event well henry uh, thank you for inviting me <laughs> it's, uh, uh, guess what i just sent him a tweet like, Henry, I'm, we are thinking of bringing you to our event. And we're like, sure, when is it happening? We just told him the day, he was like, yeah, I'm in. So he's, one of the, he's the first speaker I never got to send any formal invitation later and all of that. So uh, we really like, like that and I appreciate that. So how's it been? Uh, how's it going, Henry? Yeah. I'm, I'm good, man. I can't complain. It's, yeah. a, it's a nice weather. Yeah. You know, it's a beautiful view. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good. So uh, let's, let's, let's take it down. Like, Super deep. So, uh, what was it like growing for growing up? And uh, what was it during the time when you were growing up? We don't know the year and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm not going to spoil it. Most of the stories are on the book. But uh, growing up, I mean, uh, I, I grew up in Burundi, so I was born in Kenya, but we immediately went to Burundi. So, uh, a little bit of background, uh, like a lot of Rwandese, my parents were refugees in Burundi. Uh, I didn't find out that we were refugees till I was a teenager, but life was good, man. I mean, uh, we were more middle class. I mean, they were, they were there for a long time, so we were, they were well established. I went to private school uh, in Burundi and called Francais of Burundi. So I can't compare. I, I was kind of a, of a troublemaker, let me put it this way. I'm not going to say anything. So what was it like when you were in school? Did you know you were going to be an entrepreneur? Like, how, what, what, like, the question is, how did you know the career part that you wanted to go through? Uh, no, I, I found out my career path until I got to the States. But uh, school was not for me. Let me put it this way. Um, it took me, uh, well, I, you know, I, I finished uh, high school. So I failed my last year of high, uh, with the, we call it the back. I failed it. I had to repeat it. Then I thought that was it. 
And I remember my mom said, that, oh, okay, now you gotta go to college. I was like, college? Well, no, I don't wanna go to college. I wanna make money. So uh, I always had a knack for selling uh, stuff and all, but never, business was never the topic uh, in my family. It was about school. You know, it's all, you know, all African families. Education, 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 education. But it's when I got to the States and I got introduced to business, um, my first business was actually, I was a door-to-door -door salesman. I was selling water filtration system door-to-door. -door. Remember, English was not my first language. In the U.S. or in, in, in the U.S., in Georgia, in Stone Mountain. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to explain the, the... You can explain, don't worry. I mean, uh, it, it's in the countryside. You guys know the states. It's in the south. And this African guy knocking on doors trying to sell water filtration system. It was not a good picture. Let me put it this way. It didn't last long, but I learned a lot. And I, I, I did all those different small jobs. But I, I was hooked, man. I was hooked. And because the math made sense. You sell, you get a profit, you get a job, you get a salary, and increase if you get lucky. It, it, it was basic math. So what, what, what was the mindset when you, uh, before you moved to the U.S. to go study computer science? What was it like around uh, in Rwanda at that time? Well, I, I only came to Rwanda once in 96 before. Uh, and I lasted two weeks before I went to the States. But <coughs> I'll be fine to the question. My mindset was culture shock. You know, I'm going to a country that I don't necessarily know. Um, you know, I have to learn the language. I have to learn the culture. Of course, um, my mindset was America was a dream, right? We all dream, at least in my generation, the dream was to get out of the region. The region was, was fighting everywhere. Burundi was at war. Rwanda just ended the war. Congo was fighting. So the dream of all of us was getting out of the region. I remember clearly getting on the plane and telling myself I'll never come back to this region. That was my mindset then. So it obviously shifted, but, uh, and then I got to the States and, and I'm being truthful. I got to the airport, it was like a dream. You know, it was, uh, it was in DC, the airport was bigger than some cities I've been to. So, you know, it was, uh, it was everything I wanted, but the dream really ended really quickly because uh, America was the hardest country I ever lived in. Hardest by far. I've lived in a lot of different countries. America is the hardest. Part. Ah, okay. So, like, when when you started studying, when what what was it? What was fascinating for you studying computer science? And uh, we are going to go forward. Like, do you, now you're not. I don't know. Are you practicing what you studied, or you just abandoned? Like I said, school was not for me. Yeah. It took me seven years to do a four-year degree. Tell my mom, she, she was pissed off about <laughs> She had to pay me bill. So, uh, school was not for me. And, and, and I wish, I wish I was, I was uh, uh, not born, but I, I, I was in my 20 doing this time. Because now, you can do entrepreneurship. You can do specialized studies. You can do, uh, you can learn a craft. They have really segmented the, the, the marketplace. Before it was college, four years, and that was it. And if, if, if you're not doing good in school, you label as a loser, you know? If you want to be an entrepreneur back then, you label as a loser. Now entrepreneurship is the coolest thing, you know? They, they, when I told my mom I wanted to be an entrepreneur, she hang up on me. It's so, all <laughs> just the She thought I was losing, you know? She, she was, get a job, get a good job. So I was very good in math. That was it. Good math and sport. That was the only thing. Everything else was zero. So computer was, was booming back then. One of my best friends was doing computer science. Of course, I didn't do no research, find out what it was. I was like, all right, he's, he's doing it. Let me do that. And I, that's how you knew. There was no deep thought behind this. There was no uh, research. And uh, that's what I did. But I never worked in my field. So tell us about your first company. I know you have a series of companies, so tell us about your first company and what was it like then? And uh, why did you stop doing it? Did it uh, did, did you, are you, do you still have the company running? Today? No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, uh, 
um, the company I was, well, so I, I've done, like I said, I've done businesses. I'm, I, I, so I got to the state at 19, 21, I already had, uh, was doing some small, it was sales, sales uh, job, but it was kind of a small business. But I kept failing, failing. I, I remember when cell phone came out, I was in that business also. I didn't do good, but you know, uh, but the, the business that changed my life is a company called Equinox International. They, they don't exist anymore. But they had a training program on top of the business. And they were doing uh, green, at that time, right? it was back then, they were doing a, a, a green product, or environmental product. But they had a training program that I, I did, and it opened my eyes. I mean, it changed my whole game about business. And then I remember one of the, 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 the goals to tell you to read this book called Think and Grow Rich. I also shifted my mindset. And it opened my eyes, and that's when, but my first successful business was in the transportation. So I had a trucking company from 06 to 2012 before I moved here uh, back, back to Africa um, in, in, in trucking. So I was, uh, I was running 10 18-wheelers, and I was doing 50 states. I was doing produce, uh, regular goods. And uh, that business was, uh, was my validation to myself, to my family, because remember, every time I fail, my mom had to bail me out. So, you know, it was not a, it was not a, a pretty picture. So uh, that was a validation, but especially for me. You know, when you start a business, you don't know what you're doing, your confidence level is low, uh, you're not sure if you're moving in the right direction. You need that validation, you need that win or it's going to be very difficult for you to sustain. And I needed that way. I remember telling myself, if I don't succeed in this business, I think I'm out. And that, that's how close it is. Yes, you need a validation. So remember to keep your questions. And if you, I will soon open up for questions to, to ask.